Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to talk about tools. Because when I first started, there's really no videos on anybody tying with limited hand function. So I didn't get to see which tools would work the best, any kind of technique to hold them. So I just kind of had to figure it out by myself. That's why I did the video last week on materials, same thing. Couldn't find a video on anybody with limited hand function making flies. So I had, I didn't have anything to go off of. I just figured it out on my own. So when I first started, I had just bought a cheap generic fly tie-in kit from Amazon, which came with bobbins like this one. If I can grab that better. So I like that one, and like this one, which this one was all right. It was big enough that I could, I could grip it easily and uh, be able to work with it. It held the, held the bobbin a little tighter so I didn't have to worry about it unspooling. But as I started upgrading and figuring out how to do the stuff, I kind of switched to the loon bobbins, which you see me use this one a lot. And it's cause it's flat on the sides and then I can get a good grip on it. And I like the powder coating that they put on it. It makes it pretty easy to hold on to. Same with the, uh, the bodkin, that powder coating on the handle I can get a pretty good grip on it to where I can work with it and it doesn't want to slip out the bobbin that came with the original kit I had. It was really hard to work with. It was, the handle was really skinny. So I had a lot of problem getting a, getting a good grip on it. Another bobbin that I found that I really like is this. It's a Griffin Salt and Bass. It's not, wide like the loon one but it's big enough that i can get a good grip on it to where it doesn't slip out as bad only problem is trying to put the spool on by myself i've given myself blood blisters with this one before trying to get it on so that's why I, I usually stick with my loon i can get the spool on and off by myself pretty pretty easily same with scissors I use use these ones a lot. These lone arrowhead, same thing. I really like the powder coating on the handles. It makes it easy for me to be able to grip with not having any grip. And this isn't a sponsored video. These are just the tools that I found that I like the most with my hand function. So like bigger scissors, these ones are a little harder to use. Um, I only use them when I'm trimming on big EP flies and stuff like that. Another tool that I like is when I first started, I did a lot with dubbing loops. And the dubbing loop twister that came with my stuff was the same thing. Really skinny, hard to hold on to. I ordered this one from Jay Stockyard. It's a rotary. And then the handle is knurled, so you can you can get a good grip on it. I try to hold it between my fingers, and then I can I can spin up a dubbing loop. I found this to be really useful, just with the hand function I have, trying to be able to do this stuff. That was the easiest for me. I could get on the vise, could hold it, and then I could just spin it with one hand, and I. I could do it to make the flies. Hackle staggers, they're kind of all different. Hard to get a grip on. Some of the bigger ones, I don't remember the name of the one that I have. It's a, it's a larger stacker. Makes it a little easier. With no grip, you can't smack it real hard, so that makes it a little difficult. Whip finish tools. So I have my regular whip finish tool. This one, 
I don't mind the handle being small. I just hold it between my fingers and I can get it on the, that's the standard size on my large whip finisher. The handle was too skinny. So I'd have it between my fingers and it would fall out. So I had my dad sew some leather to it and that made it to where I can grip it really good. So don't be afraid to modify your tools to help them, to help make them work for you, make it easier on yourself where you're not fighting with your hands as bad trying to do the stuff. It's already hard enough when you can't, can't hold on to the material. So find tools that can, can help you become a more efficient tire. Next, I would have to say would be, oops, be uh, a brush, some type of brush. So I have this lice brush here. I don't really like it. The handle is too big. So trying to hold it between my fingers, it slips out really bad. I have this one. It's really old and plastic, but I can hold it pretty good when I'm brushing out craffer or pseudo hair, any kind of synthetic brushing out a fly. I can hold on to this one a lot easier. So try, if you can, find a skinny little thin brush and try to figure out the easiest way for you to hold it. So for me, it's between my fingers. Put it between my fingers, kind of close my hand, and then I can I can brush stuff up. I'll have to adjust it because it will start slipping. But same thing with the tools. Find a tool that will fit your hand and that you can work with. Doesn't necessarily have to be loon. There are so many tools out there to pick from. These are just the ones that I kind of went with and I stuck with. And I like it because I can get a good grip on it to where I can tie. I can put put pressure on it while I'm holding material. So even with having no grip, I can put a little pressure on it to where it at least hold the material. And then I can come back with tighter wraps. So find, find tools that work for you. Stuff that's really thin doesn't work for me as much. Scissors that have small finger holes, being I have to put both of my fingers in them, doesn't really work. That's that's another reason I went with the loan scissors. The holes are a little bigger on them, so I can get my fingers in. But scissors are the same thing. There are so many different brands that you can choose from. Um, forceps are the same thing, or hemostats. I use these a lot on tying, and it's the same thing. Finger holes are big enough I can get my fingers through to where I use them a lot on nymphs, like if I'm using thin skin, because I can't, can't grip the thin skin and my hand tight enough to pull it forward, so I use the hemostats to hold it, and then I'll get some wraps of thread on it. So just kind of trying to figure out how to make the stuff work for you. When I first started tying, I had wished there were videos like this because I had no idea how to do anything. And with no hand function, didn't know if I would be able to hold on to the material, if I'd be able to hold the tools, how to do anything. So I had, I had looked a lot about trying to find videos on people tying with no hand function, and there was none. So that's why I wanted to start making the videos. So if there's anybody out there in my situation that wants to learn then they have a starting point because it is kind of difficult when you don't know how to do anything and you're not even sure if you can hold the hold the tools or the material so it's kind of hard to learn when you don't have a starting point but that's why I wanted to make these couple videos just as a starting point one of the tools I want to get and I have it is a razor blade holder. One of the, I think it's a stone stone foe, where you can you can twist it and it'll bend the razor blade for you. I don't do too much with deer hair. It's a little harder, harder material for me to work with. Big clumps, a lot of pressure. I'm not there yet. Hopefully one day, but I would like to get one of the razor blade cutters for 
on occasions when I try to play a deer hair doing a deer hair head or something, I would like to have the razor blade cutter because the double edge razor blades are rather sharp. So keeping it away from my fingers is a good thing. One day I will add one of those to my uh, my arsenal of tools. But I think that's gonna do it for the tools. Like I said, there's a lot of different brands out there. Find one you like. Find something that works with your hands. Obviously, if you have hand function, it's not really a problem. You can use anything. But when your hands don't work, you're a little more limited. Same with hackle pliers. I'd like to get some new hackle pliers. I haven't found one that I really like yet. Um, same with wire cutters. I would like to get get a nice pair of those. I have just kind of a cheap generic pair. And it works. It's a little harder to use because they're big. So for cutting wire on brushes or anything like that, doing a, um articulated fly, something that will make it easier for me to cut with. And vices. You do not need a rotary vise to tie. But when your hands don't work, a rotary vise does make it a lot easier. I started on a very cheap apprentice vise. Just something I found on Amazon. Just to see, to get my, just to get my feet wet in it to see if I could tie. And if I was going to keep an interest in it. On a lot of the flies I tie, a rotary vise is necessary. So I can't hold on to like, if I'm doing a hackle, I can't hold on to the hackle pliers tight enough or keep it on my finger to spin it around the hook, just using my hands. So that's where the rotary function comes in. Same with dubbing, chenilles. So when you're, when you're starting out and you wanna learn, you don't need a rotary vise. But it, it does help. I couldn't do a lot of the flies I tie without having the rotary vise. So I really enjoy that. But I think that covers the tools. Hopefully um, this weekend I'm going to get out and actually get to fish if the weather clears up. It's been raining all day. But if y'all have any questions on any materials or tools, put it down in the comments. I will reply. I'm trying to find videos that people want to see. So if you have any suggestions or any kind of video that you want to see, whether fly, anything like that, let me know. If you're new, please subscribe. It would really help out. I'm trying to grow this channel as much as possible. And I know it, right now it's kind of slow with just doing tying videos. I'm going to do hunting and fishing and uh, hopefully like shooting range videos, different stuff, maybe do some some day-to-day -day videos of what I do during the day from a wheelchair. But let me know what you're interested in. I will try to make a video, best of my ability. But like I said, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, until next time, thanks for tuning in. And I will see y'all.